hello uh, so uh, we so so we are only uh, 2 minutes away from going live so i would request all the speakers to keep switch on the camera so much sir if anybody is not connected i would request ki aap uh, you can ask everyone to connect because it's only 1 minute left yeah man yeah man is manish if uh, any any anybody else to join could you please ask uh, if anybody is remaining to join please and all the videos that are on will go live uh, uh, and whoever is the active speaker will go live to the audience on the webinar platform so all uh, the people from the support side will keep their videos off and the moderator sir and the speaker sir can keep their videos on all throughout can we keep our uh, uh, image or photo on instead of the video so we will your choice sir but video would be better because whenever you speak people will the audience will be able to see you then okay i i will take care of that thank you sir only no. during the introduction and the q and a you have to keep the video on when okay. somebody else is presenting that time you can uh, mute it but we would uh, recommend to keep it on okay uh, so so we can uh, so we are ready to start i can see only three videos right now manish dr kulkarni is not connected so far i think rohit irrespective let's go live uh, over to you manish uh, uh, mahesh over to you and then okay okay have dr ravish to start uh, so you can start now okay uh, you want me to start now yes dr ravish you you need yeah. to Can I start? Yes. Yes. Sir. Good evening to all the participants. I am Dr. Ravish, Professor of Community Medicine at Kims Bangalore, and Treasurer APCRI. Welcome all of you to this online symposium on passive immunization against rabies on the occasion of World Rabies Day 2020. This symposium is organized by Association for Prevention and Control of Rabies in India (APCRI). which is a more than 22 year old association committed to the elimination of rabies from india with the support of serum institute of india private limited which is the largest manufacturer of vaccines in the world and the producer of first rmap that is rabies monoclonal antibodies available in the world as rabies shield for passive immunization against rabies this symposium will focus on the advances and significance of passive immunization in rabies post exposure prophylaxis which is life saving in all category 3 exposures since the administration of any vaccine stimulates production of neutralizing antibodies and protective level of antibodies are seen only after 7 to 14 days after the initial dose of vaccine therefore it is important to protect during this window period of 7 to 14 days and infiltration of rabies monoclonal antibodies or rabies immunoglobulins into and around all the bite wounds will neutralize the virus at the site of bite and thus saves the life of the bite victim in this regard we have the eminent speakers for today's evening symposium professor mk sudarshan an eminent personality in the field of rabies prevention across the globe Dr D H Ashwath Narayana president of APCRI with immense clinical research background and Dr Prasad Kulkarni the most experienced medical director and a clinical pharmacologist for rabies biologicals from the pharmaceutical company first we begin the symposium it is a request to all the participants to type their questions in the chat box so that it can be taken up one by one at the end of the session till that time kindly mute the systems please we will start the symposium first we will welcome the first speaker i welcome the first speaker dr mk sudarshan sir 
founder president and mentor apcri and abc nisha foundation is the member of expertation expert consultations on rabies world health organization the headquarters he was the dean and principal and professor of community medicine now he is retired from kims bangalore he has more than 100 publications and he is also the recipient of bc roy award of the government of karnataka and indian medical association sir was the project lead and principal investigator for both the who apcri national multicentric survey till date there are only two national wide survey has been done and for both sir is the project lead so we welcome dr sudarshan sir sir it is over to you sir to continue thank you yeah uh, thank you very much uh, dr ravish for a detailed introduction to the program and also uh, telling uh, all uh, uh, all the things about the past of me and also a uh, few nice words thank you very much and i think i will straight away go to the presentation and uh, so uh this presentation and this symposium is uh, organized in the context of uh, the 14th uh, world rabies day that is uh, due on 28th of september day after tomorrow and uh, uh, we have a uh, a goal of having uh, Uh, zero uh, human rabies that is uh, transmitted by dogs by 2030 and the title of my presentation is uh, uh, passive immunization needs to play an active role too so uh, this is the title of my presentation and uh, i uh, hope uh, all are able to see the slide can i get a confirmation is everybody able to see the slide yes sir it's yeah thank you thank you thank you so world rabies day commemorates the death anniversary of louis pasteur uh, who lived from 27th december 1822 to 28th september 1895 in fact uh, when the a centenary uh, ceremony of uh, uh, commemorating the death uh, of louis pasteur was held at uh, institute pasteur in uh, paris france uh, i was also invited and i was a part of the three day program so that is in brief and uh, uh, world rabies day i will tell a little more about it in the subsequent slide and this is the photograph of the late uh, scientist So, so can you go in slide show more, please? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Now, World Rabies Day is the first and only global day of action and awareness for uh, rabies prevention, and uh, it is an opportunity to unite as a community uh, by helping individuals, non-governmental organization. and governments to connect and share their work and uh, as i told you that uh, this world rabies day is the 14th world rabies day and uh, the first world rabies day was held uh, on uh, 8th of september 2007 for some reason it was there on 8th of september 2007 but anyway now it is from subsequent years it has been Uh, changed to 28th of september the this year's uh, theme focuses on vaccination and collaboration so if you see here it is end rabies vaccinate and collaborate so in brief the theme reminds us of key current issues in rabies elimination namely uh, as i told you uh, it is uh, zero human rabies by 2030 that is uh, transmitted to humans by uh, dogs and uh, the world rabies day is uh, 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 organized and uh, collaborated by uh, global alliance for rabies control 
and international non governmental organization known as garc and uh, uh, vaccinate collaborate in the context of this year's uh, world rabies day it is uh, uh, importance of dog rabies vaccination because we will have to prevent uh, the source of infection and 97% of uh, human rabies in india is due to dog rabies spillover that is following uh, bites by dogs to humans so we have to prevent rabies occurring in the source that is in the dogs so that's why dog rabies vaccination assumes importance and uh, the veterinarians come to the forefront and if they can check rabies in the source then we will not have rabies in humans but as of now uh, it is occurring from dogs to humans and as a result we have to give rabies post exposure prophylaxis in humans who are bitten by rabid dogs and there is a need for a united effort towards achieving elimination of this trans boundary disease wherever land boundaries are there between the states or between the countries uh, neither the uh, dog nor the virus has any uh, boundary uh, sense they cross the boundaries and they spread the disease just as it is happening uh, along the uh, india nepal border is one example just i am giving it now now our focus today is on uh, passive immunization and uh, so in that context just let me refresh some basics immunity is our defense to any infection and this defense to infection could be innate or inherent or it could be adaptive or acquired so either it is intrinsic or innate or it is adaptive or acquired immunity and uh, what is not intrinsic and what is not innate has to be acquired and how is it acquired to through roots one is a natural route that is passive maternal antibodies i am not going into details uh, even uh, uh, in the dogs the maternal antibodies uh, of a rabid dog to the puppy it uh, it transfers and uh, so otherwise active means uh, it is active infection so now now it is not uh, the antibody it is the uh, uh, infection now uh, passive is maternal yeah artificial uh, passive transfer is the antibody transfer that occurs uh, both in uh, humans and in the dogs and uh, the artificial active is the vaccination so uh, what we need to uh, remember is here comes uh, the our, our uh, uh the passive immunization uh, is here uh, whether it is uh, rig or whether it is uh, monoclonal antibody it comes here and uh, this is with reference to the vaccine rabies vaccine now this is another important slide which we need to uh, keep in mind why passive rabies immunization is important and vaccine alone is not adequate to repeat why rig and rmaps are important and rabies vaccine alone are not sufficient in bleeding wounds in category 3 exposures now here i will explain this quickly uh, here is the rabies virus entry or the rabies virus concentration and this is actually the days of vaccination and the incubation period is usually anywhere around 5 days to ordinarily 2 years and sometimes it could be over 8 years also but anyway we'll take it uh, this is a slide 
borrowed so even in india we will take it as 30 days is the incubation that is the time interval between a rabid animal bite in a human and then onset of hydrophobia or clinical rabies so it is about 30 days or about a month so why this period we need to know is there is what is known as prophylaxis window so what what does that mean is when there is a bleeding wound we need to neutralize the virus after the wound management by infiltrating the wound with rabies immunoglobulin or rabies monoclonal antibody in a sense even rmaps are rag just for our understanding so we need to inject it because the virus once when it is introduced when the vaccine is given 037 it takes about 7 days for the vaccine induced antibodies to appear and then slowly it passes over whereas if you and this particular window of 7 days is very crucial because the incubation period could be as short as 5 days. So, in the severely exposed individuals, vaccine, severely exposed means not very severely bitten, even a small bleeding wound in, in a strict sense is severely exposed. A small bleeding wound is also a category 3 exposure and vaccine alone is not sufficient and passive immunization is life saving because if you see here uh, it starts from seventh day as a vaccine response antibody response if you see here and this particular period is a window period it is very very dangerous so we need to introduce immediate protection through passive rabies immunization and it appears immediately within a few hours and then slowly, of course, due to various factors, it gets eliminated. But by the time the active immune response following vaccination picks up, this immunization, passive one covers the uh, window period. So this needs to be kept in mind. If passive immunization is not done, active immunization is only uh, done, vaccine is given, then this window period is not covered, the incubation periods is there and after about 30, 35 days, here it is 35 days, we will take it as 30 days, the illnesses will start. Okay, uh, then once uh, rabies encephalitis is there, we all know that there is no cure. So now next is how rabies Im passive immunization, that is uh, RIG and RMAP works. This also we need to understand why injecting into the wounds is important. See, when there is a, a bite and a, a breach in the skin and the dermis and then the saliva containing the virus is injected into the tissues, these are rabies viruses. Through some dynamics, they move to the free nerve ending. They are neurotropic. They have an affinity. And through a mechanism of chemotaxis and other consideration factors, they move towards a free nerve ending and then they enter through a neuromuscular junction. So they get latched on to a free nerve ending. So they may be latent here for some time or they may multiply in the local muscle in a slow, uh, steady way and then still they ultimately enter through a free nerve ending. So it is very important that the this entry into a free nerve ending is blocked. So here we see uh, uh, RAG, RMAB is being injected into the wound and it appears here and it blocks and neutralizes the virus and prevents the entry of the virus into the nerve ending. So thus prevents the rabies viral nerve infection and aborts a possible uh, rabies encephalitis. Now, what are the different uh, rabies immunoglobulins that are available? Broadly, uh, I think most of you know this, but uh, to refresh uh, some youngsters or some who are uh, who need a kind of an update is there are different equine rabies immunoglobulins that are available. Uh, uh, 
Uh, one is the, from the Government Institute, CRI Kasoli, Himachal Pradesh. It is known as anti rabies serum. And uh, this is from, uh, there are three ERAGs that are available from uh, different sources uh, in the private uh, sector. So the, that is of equine origin, horse origin. Now this is of human rabies immunoglobulin. The ERAGs are all indigenously uh, uh, all these are, uh, uh, they are all uh, produced in India. Uh, whereas the human rabies immunoglobulins are all imported. So these are the three HRIGs that are uh, imported. They are very expensive. I'll come to that. So uh, passive immunization in a nutshell is Administered, as I have told you, it is most advantageous and most beneficial if it is injected as early as possible, immediately after a rabies exposure, certainly just before or shortly after the first dose of anti-rabies vaccine. However, if the RAG is not, or RMAP is not available in the interior place or for whatsoever reason, it can be safely administered till seventh day after starting the rabies vaccine. So full dose or as much as possible should be administered into and around the wound site. And this is a world recommendation. I have borrowed the slide. And uh, the new recommendation is uh, there is very little benefit uh, that is uh, accrued following uh, any uh, systemic injection of any leftover uh, uh, RAG or RMAP once uh, all uh, a sufficient wound infiltration has been done. So that I will come in the subsequent, or we can take it up during question and answer. This is a world slide. I will go into the next one. So coming to the rabies passive immunization in India, the summary. So uh, I told you that a few types of ERIG that are available. And this is the recommended, it is available. This is the recommended dosage. And this is the potency or the strength uh, that is available and uh, uh, the cost and all it is uh, most of you are using it you know that and uh, uh, this is uh, an approximate cost for a, an adult who weighs around, uh, around about 75 kg and hrag if you see here these are all some approximate cost and don't go strictly by the values of money that is given here so you can say that uh, HRAG is around 25 times costlier than uh, ERIG and uh, uh, there are two uh, types of uh, uh, RMAPs are now available in India. Over two and two years back, uh, the Serum Institute of India uh, was the first uh, uh, pharmaceutical company in the world to continuously produce and then uh, launch a a rabies monoclonal uh, antibody and uh, it has uh, stood the test of time for over two years and uh, there have been it has been found to be very safe and efficacious and uh, it, the cost of it is about five times uh, the cost of ERIG but please remember that it is one-fifth the cost of HRIG and uh, the, uh, the latest and the uh, most recent uh, RMAB that is to be la uh, launched is uh, from uh, Zydus and uh, it is uh, 40 IU and potency is 600 IU and uh, it is available in a 2.5 ml this one and uh, the cost will be around uh, uh, 6000 rupees. So <clears throat> what I would like to convey from my personal experience is I think it is uh, time that uh, we uh, use more and more of uh, passive immunization and uh, particularly uh, use uh, uh, RMAB, uh, which are safer, which are efficacious. And uh, uh, I think uh, a time should come when we will stop importing HRIG. And in the long run, uh, because of various other issues of uh, 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 avoiding bleeding of uh, you know, horses for uh, uh, producing ERAG. In the long run, I think uh, 
rabies monoclonal antibodies have a, a, a good uh, future and they have come to stay. So here uh, in this uh, slide, uh, what I am showing is uh, even uh, slightly uh, reddish slides with a clear breach in the dermis and a slight ooze of blood uh, is a category three rabies exposure and they require uh, infiltration by RMAB or RAG. And even small, uh, if you see here, uh, they would have cleaned it at home and the bleeding would have stopped. But even such wounds require uh, RAG or RMAP. And of course, these are all uh, very clear uh, uh, bite wounds. And they should not be uh, ignored by giving only vaccine. There are instances where uh, many have died uh, we have the figures, but I will not go into the details where only vaccine was given and uh, uh, in a category, in many category three bites and patients have succumbed due to rabies for non-use of passive immunization. So this is, uh, uh, this is a way of, this here it shows how uh, RMAP or RIG has to be injected. So some insights into passive rabies immunization in India. Uh, use of RAG. We did uh, two uh, WHO uh, APCRI National Multicentric uh, Surveys. The first one was in 2003 when at that time we found a 2% use of uh, RAG. There was no RVAP. And in uh, uh, it is uh, not 20, uh, 2017, sorry, it is 2017. It is uh, increased to 18%. Majority of human rabies deaths are due to non-use of passive rabies immunization. Uh, this is an observation which we have recorded uh, in the first survey. <laughs> and uh, the reasons uh, are, uh, one is many doctors do not know uh, about the product itself and the importance of passive rabies immunization. Uh, and uh, there is a general apathy to use it because it is a very messy and time consuming procedure. And uh, the, the many are also afraid of using uh, RIG or ERIG for uh, fear of uh, reactions. So that is adverse events, uh, which is not true. Uh, and we have used it for over 25 years in uh, Kim's hospital. Uh, there has been no death due to anaphylaxis. And uh, only as I think one or two cases of acute serum sickness was there and they were uh, uh, managed. There has been no, uh, no uh, death due to any anaphylaxis. And infiltration of wounds with the rig is definitely, RMAB is uh, life-saving. And uh, WHO in 2018 and Government of India in 2020 have concluded and recommended that systemic injection of R rigs and RMAPs is of little benefit. Uh, so, this has gone on record. What is uh, pending is uh, its incorporation in the uh, product insert that comes from uh, the pharmaceutical companies. So, uh, it has to be a triangulation between uh, the drug controller general and the producers of these products. And uh, RIGs and RMAPs are quite safe and anaphylaxis in RAG is very, very rare. The latest documentation is one out of 40,000 cases. Eerie. Hence, use a refer without fail for uh, uh, RICS, RMAPs in all category three cases. As, and there are instances where even in category two, we, we will have to do passive immunization, like where uh, persons are on immunosuppressant uh, or the person has uh, some immunosuppressant condition. In such uh, patients, even in category two, because they may not satisfactorily respond to vaccine. So uh, passive immunization will be, uh, is recommended. Uh, and uh, so in certain uh, category two cases, uh, also we need to give uh, passive immunization. And if uh, passive immunization is not done, only vaccine is used. And uh, uh, then uh, there are, then there are the chances of uh, fatality is high. So with this, I conclude and I thank uh, Serum Institute of India for giving me this opportunity to speak in this webinar. Uh, 
on the eve of uh, world rabies day uh, and uh, i thank all those uh, uh, present here for uh, uh, patient hearing thank you very much thank you sir now we will move on to the next speaker dr dh ashwath narayana the president of apcri and is also the executive director of rabies initia foundation presently is the medical superintendent of kims hospital bangalore and professor of community medicine in the same medical college who has got immense clinical research background and more than 75 publications he was the project coordinator for both the who apcri national multicentric surveys and member of expert group for national guidelines for rabies prophylaxis 2019 the recent one under nrcp and he is also the member of national center for disease control ministry of health and family welfare government of india i welcome dr d h ashwath narayan sir sir please take over the session thank you ashwath sir yeah thank you very much good evening to all of you uh good evening to all of you and uh, uh, my fellow speakers professor sudarshan and uh, dr sat kulkarni and thanks ravish for a uh, nice words and uh, i'm here to share uh, some details about the new products that is rabies monoclonal antibodies uh, which is uh, come up for uh, passive immunization a new new tool against uh, rabies as a passive immunization some important things to know about rabies is rabies you know that rabies is almost always fatal that's very very important and in our clinical practice more than 85% of the cases reported to us those are animal bite cases report to us are almost are, are, are 85% they are all category 3 exposure that means bleeding wounds they carry a little or higher risk of uh, carrying uh, causing rabies and you should also know that rabies does not give second chance so at the first instance only you need to provide uh, the prophylaxis correct prophylaxis that to aggressively not only depending upon only vaccine as professor sudarshan said there is a active role for passive immunization also it has to be taken as a very active active role we need to take care and apcri is in the forefront of promoting passive immunization against rabies so that our country is get rid of the human rabies and it is in confer with the who uh, who or global goal of zero human rabies deaths by 2030 we have a very short time during which we need to act aggressively so that uh, we will reduce because india is the uh, has got a very bad distinction of reporting highest number of human rabies deaths and also highest number of uh, animal bites to who so we we are almost uh, reporting about one third of the global uh, uh, human rabies deaths around 20 uh, around 20000 out of uh, 59000 occurring globally and hence to prevent this deadly disease uh, deadly disease we need to have a safe and effective uh, uh, passive immunization which is very very important in rabies and which is also affordable it is also affordable so let us go into the details about monoclonal antibodies and as professor sudarshan said there are two types of uh, tools available mainly we have rix and monoclonal antibody among the rix we have two products that is equan rabies immunoglobulin and human rabies immunoglobulin which most of the practitioners are using in this country for more than 2 uh, 3 decades so after knowing this limitation that let me go into the details about rabies monoclonal antibodies which is a new molecules first let us look into the shortcomings of equine rabies immunoglobulin even though this product is uh, uh, readily manufactured indigenously in a sufficient quantities but it has got a imminent danger of uh, going out of shelf or production because uh, since it's a heterologous means produced from the horse uh, serum Uh, there is a animal rights activism that is going going on in this country and this may lead on to uh, reduce production and uh, subsequently reduce availability so this may be a this may be a problem in the days to come so we need to keep this in mind regarding uh, equine rabies immunoglobulin 
The second important thing is about the safety because it is heterologous in nature. It is from derived from the horse. It has got a uh, imminent uh, danger of uh, uh, causing uh, adverse, more adverse reactions, and uh, very rarely the risk of anaphylaxis, uh, which should not be happening uh, with our products. And it also has got a risk of uh, carrying the blood-borne pathogens. And since it's heterologous in nature, the anti-drug antibodies may also be uh, produced in the uh, uh, subjects where this has been uh, uh, provided. The another important thing is, since it's heterologous in nature uh, and it carries the risk of uh, IgE-mediated uh, anaphylaxis, uh, we need to provide a skin skin sensitive test. But anyway, WHO has uh, in 2010 long back uh, has recommended not to use a skin skin sensitive test. Uh, but our product inserts, uh, the DCGA and the product inserts still mentions that it has to be provided only of the skin sensitivity test. So this is uh, one, one more additional procedure before giving the ERIG. The second component is HRIG. Uh, you are, so it is not being used widely in this country because of its uh, short availability or limited availability. And the second question is affordability, quite expensive. This we reserve only for the high income group or the VVIPs. Uh, in this country, very few people uh, have had animal bites uh, in this category, but most of the, uh, or majority of the animal bite victims in this country, they're all from the poor and uh, poor from poor uh, economic uh, background or from just a upper uh, lower income group. So it is not a product to be used for these uh, people. And it, it is also has got the risk of having a blood bomb pathogen from the human source. So uh, this, these are some of the limitations of uh, HRIG. And another important one is it is not indigenously manufactured, but it is imported. Imported in a limited quantities from abroad by one or two companies. Hence, we need to have an alternative to these uh, immunoglobulins, uh, mainly uh, ERIG and HRIG. And as Professor Sudarshan said, the utility or usage of rabies immunoglobulin in this country, because of these factors, is very low, 10 to 10, less than 10 to 15 percent. So, hence, we need to have the new product, new molecule in the form of rabies monoclonal antibody against uh, uh, rabies. And WHO had long back proposed that we, they should, we need to have a rabies monoclonal as an effective alternate. But it took a long time after research to uh, arrive at this stage, and India is in the forefront of production of rabies monoclonal antibody. The first company is Serum Institute of India, which marketed uh, uh, rabies monoclonal antibody in 2017. In fact, I am one of the uh, principal investigators for their phase uh, two and three study, which has been published, and I'm going to share those results. The second uh, product uh, has been recently developed uh, and uh, launched by Zydus, Zydus and uh, it, the product is also available. So we have two uh, molecules, rabies monoclonal antibodies in the country as of now. So let us look into uh, uh, about these molecules in detail. I again want to reiterate that we need to have a very strong uh, uh, molecule or a product for passive immunization as um, some of the, or most of the animal bite cases that occurs in the country are category three exposures, and these are some of the category category three exposures. So we cannot go wrong in uh, uh, providing a, pro, uh, a post exposure prophylaxis, especially giving passive immunization. So this needs to be uh, we we cannot uh, we need to have a very strong uh, uh, passive immunization tool. So for to treat this kind of cases. So you can see here also there are very very bad animal bite cases do occur do come to our clinics. So wherein uh, we need to be very def def doubly sure that we are giving the best available uh, medicine, especially in terms of rabies monoclonal antibody. As Professor Sudarshan said, uh, rabies immunoglobulin administration is same as your ERIG or HRIG. So you've been doing this. So this the definitely is administration. There is no difference. It is the same method, same method, the same way as you are giving ERIG and HRIG. What are the other advantages of rabies monoclonal antibodies? So this is out of a re recombinant uh, DNA technology, and 
this is available in uh, adequate uh, sufficient qualities big, uh, quantity because it is easier to produce it can be accelerated in a mass uh, scale and quality control is much easier uh, because it is a recombinant technology compared to erig and hrig then it has got a reduced risk of adverse reactions and uh, much more lower with uh, mab human rabies monoclonal antibody these are more potent than uh, rics and less volumes required and no risk of blood borne pathogens no skin sensitivity test required and since the, these are uh, new products and potent products so we had not have the failures yet in this 3 years where other in, in which other diseases these monoclonal antibodies are used there are multiple monoclonals have been licensed in across the globe like uh, food and drug administration fda and european medical authority for some of the autoimmune diseases inflammatory diseases infections and various types of cancers so like it has been used in rheumatoid arthritis it is used in breast cancer it has been used in various types of uh, cancers like uh, non hodgkins lymphoma see chronic lymphocytic uh, lymphoid leukemias and uh, certain uh, infections like respiratory syndrome virus etc so these maps have played a pivotal role in the treatment and prevention of this little diseases so this is not a new product which has been uh, developed now but but it has been used in used uh, for uh, various other conditions across the globe but for rabies it is a new molecule after uh, rabies immunoglobulin so let us look into uh, this monoclonal anti antibodies whether they are effectively neutralizing the rabies virus there are two types of uh, monoclonal antibodies which are as of now just like you have uh, erig and hrig here also there are uh, in rabies monoclonal antibodies there are two products one is human rabies monoclonal antibody which is 100% human antibody uh, provided a dose of 3.33 iu per kg body weight and available as 100 iu and 50 international units and second one is murine uh, rabies monoclonal antibody uh, which is uh, available as a cocktail so dose is 40 iu per kg body weight and available as 600 iu and 1500 iu so this is the paper that uh, i was telling you about the uh, human rabies monoclonal antibody produced uh, indigenously and marketed by serum institute of india where i was one of the uh as principal investigator and have author of this article let me let us look into uh, the the results of this uh, study uh, in chart so this <coughs> slide shows you about the effectiveness or the immunogenicity part of human rabies immunoglobulin uh, which is a phase 2 uh, uh, and 3 non ferritin study before drug control approval after this drug control approval uh, given uh, approval for marketing this product so when you look into this the zero response this shows the number of uh, subjects in the trial who are responded who are zero converted after giving the uh, the, the rabies shield that is uh, human uh, rabies monoclonal antibody which by which uh, the brand name goes and the rabies vaccine rabies vaccine the rv stand for rabies vaccine here you can see the increase in zero conversion uh, response of individuals these are the percentage of individuals so so most more uh, by day 14 almost 100% of the subjects have been zero converted when compared when compared to the other control group that is this is a hrig group plus rabies vaccine so basically these are two groups rabies shield group and hrig group where both the group have uh, subjects are given rabies vaccine here this table this part of the right side table shows the geometric mean titers where the refit tested refit test has been which is a global standard done at cancer laboratories in usa wherein it shows the geometric mean titers wherein minimum we need to have 0.5 iu per ml so which is considered as protective by day 14 the rabies shield group has got much more higher antibodies 23.3 when compared to the hrig group so this group has got much more much more than the hrig group so you can see by day 84 84 all subjects are uh, had zero converted and uh, they it still had a good antibodies so minimum is 0.5 ml so much more than that it, uh, kindly note that the what is important by day 14 
Everybody should have seen a convert and we should have a good antibody titus here. So, like, let us look into the other second uh, map, uh, which is also given approval by drug control and available in this country. So, this is a cocktail uh, monoclonal antibody murine origin, uh, which has also been uh, published in uh, Clinical Infectious Diseases, which is a peer reviewed uh, uh, journal. And here you also can see the, the zero response, zero response of the subjects. Zero response of the subjects, uh, day 14 till uh, date 84, and also the geometric mean titers uh, of the subjects who have received the murine monoclonal antibody uh, available as uh, TwinRab here, along with the rabies vaccine, and the rabies vaccine in that study. So uh, this, uh, you can see the antibody titers from day zero till uh, day, day 84 and the zero, zero converter response. So another important thing is uh, I need I try to compare the uh, currently available uh, products in the country ERIG HRIG uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, we, uh, two brands like uh, Murine monoclonal antibody and the Human Rabies monoclonal antibody. So they were developed uh, much earlier 1960s. This was uh, it came out in 1985, and I was telling you about uh, WHO had thought of monoclonal antibodies way back in 1980s only, but it has been uh, taken shape uh, now in this uh, decade. So the source is horse serum here. This is human serum. This is a mouse uh, uh, antibody recombinant from urine source. This is a human antibody. The dose and potency here is ERIG 40 EU per kg body weight, HRIG 20 EU per kg body weight, murine monoclonal antibody 40 EU per kg weight, whereas the, the human rabies monoclonal antibody uh, is given at 3.33 IU per kg, but so not down very less uh, potency. When you look into the origin, uh, ERIG is heterologous. There are chances of uh, development of anti-drug antibodies and the HRIG is homologous. Uh, less chances are nil. And murine, since it's murine, there's heterologous, uh, even though they are uh, uh, by uh, uh, recombinant technology, there may be chances of development of anti-drug antibodies uh, and uh, leading on to less adverse reactions. And uh, human rabies monoclonal antibodies are homologous, homologous and from the human source. So it, uh, it may, not, may or may not have any uh, adverse reactions. So the cost and acceptability of these products, uh, ERIG is widely used in this country because it's most economical, being uh, uh, used extensively in the government setup as of now. But as I told you, this has got own limitations. So because of the limitations, uh, even, though the, the, even though the government agencies are procuring, but it is not being effectively used in all cases. And HRIG, very expensive, hence uh, not being used extensively. And it is a uh, cost, cost is not a very cost effective one, quite expensive. And uh, presently, the, the cocktail available uh, product here is uh, presently is uh, presently more expensive than uh, the available uh, uh, competitors, the human, human MAP. So this human MAP is significantly more cost effective than HRIG and used in more than 18 countries because it's launched in 2018. So from the last three years being uh, widely used in this country and also exported to many uh, countries in Asia and Africa. So what do these monoclonals achieve? What do we achieve by having this? So the availability, definitely they, because of increased uh, uh, production, uh, because of uh, uh, recombinant technology, it can be made, uh, made available. So definitely it will overcome the uh, disadvantages or uh, demerits of uh, ERIG and HRIG. So they're absolutely safe in compared to ER ERIG. And only thing is, uh, since, the, since the administration is the same as ERIG, HRIG, so our doctors need to be uh, oriented that uh, our, uh, the, a lot of kind of training programs have to be conducted to popularize the administration of uh, this uh, very potent uh, uh, passive human immunization tool to reduce human rabies deaths in our country. So the another important thing is uh, it saves a lot of time because uh, there's no need to give a skin sensitive test and then wait for 15 minutes and then give a full dose and after full dose again make them wait to look for local and systemic uh, adverse reactions, uh, 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 immediate and delayed adverse reactions, they're absolutely safe. So it will uh, save the time 
and the anxiety uh, on the uh, uh, infiltrating uh, fusion. And the cost also, when compared to HRIG, this is uh, cost effective. And presently, the uh, cocktail, Muroin monoclonal uh, cocktail antibody is quite uh, expensive uh, when compared to the competitor, uh, human release monoclonal antibody. So the take home message as of now, as I told you that to, if you want to reduce human rabies deaths in this country and make a world free of rabies uh, by 2030, so we need to uh, make a all, of, all out efforts, especially APCRI is doing that uh, aggressively and a lot of training programs, a lot of uh, hands-on training programs have been uh, conducted. Um, many uh, videos have been uh, produced by APCRI uh, to popularize this uh, uh, pasteurization so that uh, our physicians uh, will not have any hesitation and they administer to save lives. So this needs to uh, be the key to prevent rabies so that uh, we can make uh, uh, our word uh, zero rabies by 2030. So thank you everyone for your patient listening. Over to Dr. Avish, please. Kulkarni sir, I think Ravish sir is not connected. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sharing my screen now. <clears throat> can you see my slides? Yes, sir. I can see the slides. I can see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, can I start? Yeah, please go ahead and start. We are waiting. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ashwat. And uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'll be talking today on a topic which is more or less similar, but uh, talking little hidden facets of the rabies monoclonal antibodies, which uh, basically is... Uh, a serum product, as you already heard from Dr. Ashwath and Dr. Sudarshan. So I'll start with some little uh, basics, like what are monoclonal antibodies? <clears throat> so these are basically identical immunoglobulins. They are parts of the immunoglobulins, and they are generated from a single B cell clone. They recognize a unique epitope or binding sites, unlike polyclonal antibodies, which bind to different epitopes in the same region. So the natural antibodies like HREG or ERIG, they are basically made by our body or made by horse's body. They are polyclonal and they go and bind to different regions of the antigen, as you can see from this picture. Whereas <clears throat> monoclonal antibodies, they are uh, basically parts of the antibodies that go and attach to only the specific regions of the antigen where it is necessary to neutralize that particular antigen. Right? And that is exactly what is a rabies monoclonal antibody by serum institute. It goes and attaches to a certain region on the G protein, surface G protein, and uh, then neutralizes the virus. So this is more or less like, you know, uh, the levo or uh, dextro isomers that we use of uh, medicinal products because uh, the racemic mixture contains two isomers. One isomer can be of no use and only one isomer can be of, uh, uh, of use and as well as the, uh, the useless isomer can, can actually cause reactions, right? So you get rid of them. And that's why you have deep penicillamine or you have leucetrizine kind of drugs. So this is a more or less similar uh, principle. So uh, as Dr. Ashwat already said, there are multiple monoclonals that are licensed across the world in US and Europe for various indications. So there is huge amount of safety and if you can see data already available for last more than two years, so there is nothing new about this concept. It's not a new molecule or something, a new concept that has been developed. So uh, what, what we require, right? So do we require a single monoclonal or multiple monoclonals? 
And uh, so what I have to say is that at antigen repeat several times on the virus or bacteria, the organism can be easily neutralized by single monoclonals. And, and that's why most single monoclonals have been proven to be efficient. And uh, that has been the case with the RSV monoclonal as well. So there is no issue about single or multiple monoclonals. And of course, if you have a single monoclonal that can bind to more than one region of the same antigen, then it is as good as having multiple monoclones. So that, that is not an issue at all. So uh, coming to the monoclones, there are different generations. So it was in the 1980s that the first monoclonal was basically kind of, you can say, discovered. And this was the first generation monoclonal that was a mouse monoclonal or a murine monoclonal, which had totally mouse proteins or antibodies, right? You can see the picture on the right hand side where you can see that all regions of this antibody are from murine origin. The second generation and why second generation was developed? Because obviously there were issues with the murine antibodies regarding safety as well as to some extent efficacy. And that's why a second generation was developed which are 65% human protein and 35% mouse. You can see from this picture. Again, people wanted to get uh, advanced uh, in this uh, science and therefore humanized antibodies were made where, which had more than 90% regions of human origin. And then finally, it was the fourth generation or the, or the most advanced one where you had the fully human monoclonal antibody where, which did not have any mouse regions, right? And as you see from this first generation to the fourth generation, in this particular category, there's a high potential for immunogenicity, meaning making anti-antibodies. Now this anti-antibodies can have problems like it can neutralize the antibody itself and can affect the potency of the product and in, in turn can affect the efficacy of the product. Also, these anti-antibodies can give rise to some safety issues. So this, uh, this particular first generation has that issue. And as you advance from fourth generation to fourth generation, this potential goes down. The human antibodies, because they are of human origin, because they are homologous, so obviously the anti-antibody formation by our own body are almost not there, right? So that's, that's about the different generation of monoclonals. So murine monoclonals, uh, they are produced in mouse, as I said, and whereas human monoclonals, they are produced in transgenic mice. Now, this picture will tell you that mouse hybridomas, hybridoma as in our tumors, so immunization targets, and then harvest genocides generate hybridomas, they are screened, and from them, these mouse antibodies are produced. Whereas here in the transgenic mice, you immunize the mice, harvest genocides, get the hybridomas, screen them and what you get because they are transgenic mouse human monoclonal antibodies right and uh, as a result they are not foreign to human body and naturally there is no anti drug antibody produced and therefore there are uh, the least risk of EDS are less with this uh, this is a publication uh, uh, where you can see that the foreignness and high dose increases are uh, risk of ADS as well as human re reactions it has been already said and uh, factors to be considered during immunogenicity risk assessment of a biotherapeutic because this issue is applicable not only for rabies monoclonal but it is applicable for any uh, protein that is developed by recombinant technology for example erythropoietin or GCSF right or various monoclonal antibodies that we saw earlier all these kind of recombinantly derived proteins if they are their, their their characteristic is foreign it's a foreign to a uh, human host then obviously there is a risk of immunogenicity meaning generation of anti antibodies right in in this case immunogenicity is not taken in a good way unlike in the in in, in when when we talk about vaccines we talk about immunogenicity as a, in a good way because those immune response is going to generate antibodies and will give protection whereas in this proteins which are therapeutic in nature, if there are antibodies produced by the protein itself, by the antibody itself, then they are going to be actually detrimental, right? Uh, even the dose, higher dose can be a problem in, in generating these antibodies, which can again affect the whole thing. So what are the safety issues this, with this Mirai antibody? 
anti drug antibodies seen with this uh, anti uh, this uh, murai monoclonals they are not desirable as i said and they can cause uh, really hypersensitivity reactions and other adrs there is a risk of serum sickness like adrs which uh, uh, as you already heard uh, it's also a risk with uh, erics uh, if required uh, to use maps again in future then this existing adrs because once you give them the body will produce this adrs and whenever next time you are going to use that particular uh, monoclonal again then uh, those adrs are going to neutralize the antibody so uh, of course it does not mean that in rabies you are going to get uh, uh, passive immunization only once because as per who recommendation in immunocompromised patients even if you have received uh, immunoglobulin in the past if you have a re exposure then again you are supposed to give uh, maps again or rig again so it's, so these people are going to get repeated rig or repeated maps and in this situation uh, the uh, these anti antibodies can be a problem uh, also sometimes uh, and in fact many times we know that the compliance is not great people do not complete their full schedule of five doses and if such people get again re exposed to a dog bite or something in that case because they are not completed the schedule then again you will have to start Uh, this as a with a with a schedule that is uh, meant for a completely fresh uh, exposure, which means that again you are going to use the RIG or MAP again, and there again if you have those anti antibodies, they are going to be a problem. So foreign nurse and high dose we talked about, and therefore because of all these issues, obviously uh, the the scientific world uh, developed the chimeric and humanized, and then finally the fully human monoclonals. so as we saw that we have one fully human antibody already in india since 2017 the dose is 3.33 i per kg and whereas recently a murine antibody cocktail has also been uh, developed uh, which is a first generation antibody and available only this year and the dose is 40 i per kg so the dose is uh, higher than the rabies monoclonal antibody Uh, uh which is the first one that was licensed so safety issues with this uh, this is another article uh, which is published in the journal called antibody technology journal and what does it say about the mouse antibodies where the full length is of mouse origin so initially the first generation of mouse derived map suffered side effects due to an unwanted immune reactions in humans they referred to as human anti mouse antibody response this response characterized by fever cheese arthralgia anaphylaxis was similar to the serum sickness observed several decades earlier with antimal anti sera this is what we saw about uh, with uh, eri right so it's similar to that so the full promise of murai antibodies could be realized by engineering to humanize murai antibodies to make them less immunogenic and safer this is what this article says so everybody agrees that there are these issues native human maps full length uh these are non immunogenic polyclines that essentially retain all the desirable quantities of murai monoclonals they are ideally suited for prophylaxis because they undergo affinity maturation in vivo and represent the natural immunoglobulin reproduction right this is what this article says because they are exactly like the natural antibodies that are produced this is one more uh, article in plos neglected tropical diseases uh, uh what do they say they say that our preliminary in vivo studies and this is about the particular cocktail that is now there available that uh, in vivo studies with the cocktails provided encouraging results however it could be presumed that the use of such antibodies in humans might have limitations as with eric so they are equating these antibodies with eric because of the potential of foreign proteins to cause side effects human maps would be preferential however more maps can be readily humanized right and this is what has already happened the human antibodies are already there also there are unknown compartmentalization half life as well as immunogenicity in humans is supposed to prevent more maps from being ideal replacement for the existing reagents right so this is what this particular article said that the murine antibodies cannot be an ideal replacement to ere or uh, even to ha so fully um, a human antibody uh, uh, let's see little bit of uh, them the manufacturing process uh, is uh, basically as i said they use specially 
they are genetically engineered transgenic mice. The mice DNA is modified to include the human antibody gene. And then the, uh, the, their own mouse AB genes, they are blocked. So they cannot make mouse antibodies. They can only make human antibodies. And then they will produce only human antibodies. And uh, that is what will be used as a uh, completely human monoclonal antibody. Right? And this is what the transgenic mice is. Why it is transgenic? Because the human gene has been uh, included in their body. And now they will start producing human antibodies and not mouse antibodies. There are multiple uh, human antibodies already in use for various indications. Uh, so, uh, as I said, they can only produce human antibodies. They are injected with the protein with which against which uh, you have to be produce uh, antibody. So, obviously, they are given the rabies vaccine. And then the uh, mouse antibody will produce the human antibody, human monoclonal. And then these antibodies uh, are converted into monoclonal cells and the monoclonal antibodies produced are fully human and they are extremely safe and effective. Uh, how do they work? Uh, they bind and neutralize the rabies virus present in the womb. Uh, they bind the, 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 the rabies monoclonal, the rabies shield, which is already there since last three years, it binds to two sites, right? So it's not only one site and therefore that makes it more powerful. Site three and minus site A, therefore, uh, there is absolutely no chance of any escape mutants, which is always the scare that uh, people think of, but that is not at all the case. So this prevents the viral entry into peripheral nervous system and reduces viral load at the site and offers immediate protection. And uh, it has been found this particular antibody active against all rabies serotypes or strains uh, that are found in India and also in Asia. And in fact, uh, I'll be telling a little bit more about this. So this antibody it neutralizes broad panel of isolates and it has been studied in comparison with HRIC uh, in CDC Atlanta and 25 different isolates uh, were neutralized. This has been tested in animal model of certain hamsters which was challenged with wild virus. There was a comparison with HRIC and the protection given was similar. So hamster model of course as you know is very very predictive. So these are various strains across the world uh, that were tested from different countries, as you, as you can see, North Central and, uh, you know, different animal species, not just dogs, but fox, skunk, raccoon, coyote, uh, bats, dogs from different countries like Argentina, Gabon. And all these isolates were neutralized, right? 17C7, that is the uh, antibody, uh, the rabishin antibody. Uh, in Asia as well, you can see that various strains from Nepal, Sri Lanka, India, Canada all got neutralized, MBL rab one This was presented in RITA in 2008. So this is the publication that came out of it. So UMAP 17C7 was the most promising antibody uh, because it neutralized all rabies virus isolates tested. And this recognizes a confirmation epitope as the serum virus bacterial protein, which includes antigenic site 3 and protege hamsters from a lethal dose of rabies virus, right? So this publication was from the University of Massachusetts and uh, also CDC was part of this publication, right? Uh, so advantages of this antibody over RIGs, it's uh, safer than IRIG, obviously, and also with unlimited supply because it is made in laboratory uh, from Cho cells, Chinese hamster ovary cells, not a foreign antibody, unlike IRIGs, uh, volume required is very low because the dose is very low. And naturally, then it becomes a very cost-effective alternative to HRE. Also, this is the most advanced fourth-generation human antibody. It's not a foreign antibody like murine again. Uh, no risk of serum sickness like ADRs, which can be seen with murines. And also, the dose is very low. Again, the similar kind of advantages that we see vis-a-vis -vis ERIC, right? Uh, also more economical, uh, though it is the most advanced molecule, still it is the most economical uh, product, very safe, no anti-drug antibodies, and it is being used in more than 18 countries and uh, hundreds of uh, more than 200,000 vials have been used and there have been no safety issues at all. There have been no cases reported of any uh, failure of the treatment. So obviously it is being safe and effective. Uh, Anti-drug antibodies are uh, with murine antibodies are undesirable as we saw they can cause hypersensitivity reaction other areas and we saw that they, because the maps can be used again 
then efficacy will be compromised. And then, of course, because of the high dose, this kind of reactions may increase. So escape mutants, we talked a little bit about it. Uh, virus escape means MAB is unable to neutralize the virus, leading to its escape. And that, of course, can happen when you view it the second time. Uh, may occur if the uh, antibody binds only to one site, but we already saw that it binds to two sites, site 3 and minus site A. And therefore, two mutations are required for any virus to escape. And the possibility of this happening, that two mutations happening at the same time are uh, practically zero. So there is no chance of escape mutant. That's one. Second thing, unlike other uh, viruses where <coughs> uh, you may have this fear, let's say RSV, that somebody gets uh, uh, this antibody and then the, there, is, there is a development of uh, escape mutant when he gets the antibody again. And this uh, particular virus then gets into the environment and uh, then infects others. And that is a big concern. That is not an issue with rabies also uh, because, uh, uh, as you know, rabies is a 100% fatal disease. So obviously, that particular virus getting into the environment or getting into the dogs is just not possible. But in any case, because this is acting at two different sites, there is practically no chance of any escapement. Uh, so this is this is the picture. These are the antigenic sites, and these are the site three and site A, where this particular uh, rabies shield or human seventeen C seven it binds, right? So there is no concern about uh, escape mutants at all. This is one more paper which says that the data demonstrate that the, the antibody has capacity to neutralize all identified isolates and minimum of two distinct mutations in the G glycoprotein are required for abrogation of neutralization. So, which is again uh, almost uh, uh, near impossibility. Uh, cost effectiveness is the key therapy costs because as we know poor people are the ones who get affected the most uh, so though they are the most advanced they are the cheapest alternative you have two strains 150 i so you can in younger children obviously you you, you can use the smaller uh, vial size and uh, at price at 1000 rupees obviously uh, it becomes a very very cheap alternative right so this is in general the patient cost, <clears throat> as you can see. So IRI, then human maps, then murine maps, and then HA. So even on the cost front, this antibody scores. So to summarize, uh, human maps is a safer and better alternative. It has uh, neutralized almost all the rabies viruses in the world that are circulating and uh, established safety, unlimited easy availability. We already saw the data presented by Dr. Ashwat and where it showed better immune titers compared to HREG, as well as there were no serious reactions caused in that particular study. The production quality is very standard, which is unlike any blood derived products. Lesser cost as compared to HREG, also as compared to Mirai. Lesser volume requirement. And because of this, of course, there is less chances of uh, compartment syndrome. And uh, there is no chance of blood borne pathogens. And therefore, just like we moved away from the no tissue vaccines to tissue culture vaccines, right? Nobody even remembers no tissue vaccines anymore. This is a high time, really high time that to move from the ERIC towards human maps. Also, similarly, uh, I don't know how many of you remember that the first hepatitis B vaccine that was developed was a plasma derived hepatitis B vaccine, which was made similarly like uh, HRE from the volunteers, the blood was drawn and then the vaccine was made. And in the late 1980s, recombinant hepatitis B vaccine was made. And that particular vaccine completely revolutionized the picture. Nobody even remembers the plasma derived hepatitis B vaccine. It is exactly the same situation. So we need to move away from ERI and get to a very, very modern, scientifically proven and most advanced molecule like human rabies monoclonal antibody. Right? Thank you so much for your kind attention. Over to you, Dr. Avish. You are on mute.
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರವೀಶ್ ಇದು ಅನ್ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಡನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಡಿಬಲ್ ಸರ್ ಎಸ್ 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 ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಕುಲಕರ್ಣಿ ಸರ್ ನೌ ವಿಲ್ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಒನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ uh in that i'll uh, choose only few of them because most of them have been covered already in the presentations uh, can we take up one by one yes please thank you the first question uh, will be uh, to dr ashwath narayan sir any evidence of effect of post exposure prophylaxis on covid 19 effect of covid 19 uh, we have not studied that but uh, sir sir yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah yeah am i audible right hello yeah so covid covid 19 uh, in spite of this yes, uh, having a pand- pandemic we are we are treating animal bite cases they are coming and uh, uh they are not uh, had any adverse reactions uh, so far but anyway it is a good uh, question that we will uh, uh, study we will study those uh, effect uh, the safety and efficacy of these rabies monoclonals uh, rabies monoclonals or rabies immunobiologicals among among the so called covid affected uh, subjects so is a good for uh, research okay sir thank you then the next question is in class 3 animal bites we give rabies immunoglobulin it is already been told by sudarshan sir once again to reimpress we give rabies immunoglobulin and rabies vaccine both of them one is an antibody and another is an antigen does there will be any problem in the protection sudarshan sir please uh no okay uh actually you say if uh... uh immunoglobulins are given is are given beyond uh seventh uh, day of starting the vaccine that is after three doses then there will be an interference with the active uh, immunity that is uh, the vaccine effect so uh, if uh, the guidelines are followed then uh, uh, they are non interfering and they are complementary in nature over thank you sir sir the next question uh, to dr active and passive immunization regimen as uh, in india as per who guidelines sir uh, to me again Is sir any you... either you or ashwath narayan sir can tell yeah, sir because anyway let i request ashwath narayan to answer over can, can I repeat, repeat repeat the question dr vish sir as per who is there any change in active and passive immunization reg- regimens in india okay as per as uh, vaccination is concerned uh, there is no change either with im uh, regimen or uh, giving uh, intradermal but as far as passive immunization is concerned uh, the monoclonal antibodies have not been recommended by government of india or uh, under nrcp Uh, because they want to uh, they recommend uh, testing uh, after uh, uh, in a multicentric studies and uh, regarding the immunoglobulin administration uh, they have recommended that uh, since uh, as suggestion sir said uh, if one, once it is given systemically it's of no use it it is cuts uh, more effective only when it is locally infiltrated so either based upon the requirement of the uh, immunoglobulin or map uh, based upon the number and type of wounds it will be a more effective only when in, when in injected locally so uh, under government of india nrcp uh, guidelines uh, by ncdc they are not the uh, not to be used uh, for systemic administration only yeah Over. can i can i just answer from my side uh, dr ravish yes sir please yeah you see uh, the problem with ncdc is i know this program is being recorded i have no issues the left hand doesn't rec- recognize the right hand see what i mean to say is when the dcgi has uh, uh, permitted the product to be available whether it is uh, rabi shield or whether it is uh, uh, twin rab let me be very uh, very frank uh, 
uh, it makes no sense to say that uh, these products are not recommended and even in government hospitals through local procurements and i think prasad kulkarni will be able to throw more light on this uh, that uh, such uh, decisions uh, uh, come in the way of uh, uh, a good and a very effective rabies prophylaxis in the country so i think uh, uh, some wisdom must uh, come in decision makers to be very wise in promoting uh, good rabies prophylaxis and prevent human rabies deaths in the country so uh, anyway i think uh, i have been very forthright and i have been frank i think uh, dr prasad kulkarni in his sober and moderate way has to handle this issue and then uh, move on to the next question over yes sir thank you sir so the next question once again will be you or dr ashwath narayan sir can infiltration of rigs be done in areas where there are abundant neurovascular structures like that in axilla sir yeah is is it over question is over yes sir yes sir that's all yeah 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 see since rabies is 100% fatal there are no contra indications for infiltration or even providing the post exposure prophylaxis so wherever the animal bites are there so uh, since uh, rabies virus is, is uh, has got a special affinity towards the uh, nerves so there is every chance that the rabies virus may enter through the nerves so your question is more important that it has to be infiltrated wherever it is especially where there are uh, more nerves yes sir yes sir thank you sir yeah where are the question is just add, i'll just add one one second one second dr vish i'll add one more yes, sentence sir. so as per the guidelines yes. uh, as professor sudarshan yes, said wherever anatomically feasible so that is the uh, bottom line wherever anatomically feasible rabies immunoglobulin or monoclonal antibodies should be infiltrated yes okay what from my thank you sir next question will be for prasad kulkarni sir have you come across any severe reactions to armab no <clears throat> i already mentioned you that uh, number of doses have been distributed across various countries there has not been a single serious reaction that has been reported and also no case of any rabies development so the antibody is working fine no safety issues no efficacy issues at all and just want to make one comment to the last question uh, uh, regarding the uh, the rabies monoco antibody i don't know whether it has been covered already but WHO in their position paper has clearly said that uh, uh, the, the first robust monoclonal antibody that has been licensed in India has been found safe and uh, efficacious and uh, if available it should be preferred over the RIGs. It, they are, that is what they have clearly uh, uh, written in the position paper. Sir, next question once again it is for you only, sir. Is hmm. uh, the Rabi Shield going for any pre-qualification from WHO? So actually, pre-qualification uh, WHO program is uh, currently only meant for vaccines. Vaccines. They don't uh, pre-qualify uh, immunoglobulins or antibodies. So even HRE, GRE, they are not pre-qualified. They are thinking of starting a program for these kind of products. I've been hearing that for last two three years. Let's see when exactly that happens. but the 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 crux of the thing is that who has already recommended uh, rabi shield over other rig products that is uh, unambiguously written in their position paper sir next question once again for you only sir as uh, rabi shield been used in many uh, any other countries if so how many countries and were there any problem in those countries so as i already uh, showed in the slides 18 countries have already received the product they have been using it and there have been no issues reported from any of these countries <clears throat> the next question anyhow we have answered once again uh, it is question for ashwath narayan sir is rabi shield required in class 2 bites also yeah so in immuno compromised individuals since the vaccines may not be effective either you can give immunoglobulin or uh, uh, rabies immunoglobulin or monoclonal antibodies the answer is yes uh, 
Dr. Ravish, uh, I have to uh, leave because I have to uh, uh, have another webinar at 6.30. So yes, is there a pressing question for me? If no, it is no sir. I think uh, I have covered all your questions. Okay, great. That's right. That's right. So please uh, excuse me, Sudarshan sir, Ashwat sir, and yes, Ravish. Thank you. Thank, thank you very sir. much. Thank bye, you, bye, sir. Bye. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, please continue, Dr. Ah, can I continue? Uh, the next question is to Sudarshan, sir. A patient has a history of dog bite and took ARV one or two doses and injection Equirab both six months back. Again, he is bitten by dog at more than two sites with severe bleeding. What is the management? See, uh, we take that... Uh, the previous uh, uh, two doses of vaccine is incomplete and uh, a proper uh, risk assessment has to be done and shall be treated as a fresh case. Over. The next question, of course, uh, it has already been covered. Can you once again to reiterate, is there any change in NCDC regarding the classification of wound? No. Sir, once again, next question to Ashwat Narayan, sir. Is there any role of two vaccines given on day zero without rabies immunoglobulin? Two dose of uh, uh, rabies vaccine is not a substitute or alternative for rabies immunoglobulin. So, rabies immunoglobulin has to be given at the earliest in all, in all category 3 exposures. Over. Thank you, sir. The next question is... Why only monoclonal antibodies have come? Why not polyclonal antibodies? Is for me? Uh, no, it's, answer, it's okay. Yes, you see, yes, the ERIG and HNIG are in a sense, they are polyclonal only. I think Dr. Prasad Kulkarni has made it uh, uh, clear in his presentation. To reiterate it, uh, polyclonal antibodies were already available in the form of EREG and HREG. The monoclonal antibodies have appeared in the form of uh, uh, rabies shield and twin drab. Over. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there any role of observation of dog uh, even today after starting the vaccination or we go or we go ahead with the complete course of vaccination? Sudarshan, sir, please. You see, uh, uh, we have to, as rabies is 100% fatal, following the exposure, we take the exposure as a life-threatening uh, situation and uh, we start rabies prophylaxis. That is uh, category 3 immunoglobulin and vaccine. Category 2 only vaccine, wound management in both the groups. So then after day 3, uh, if uh, the dog is available, uh, then uh, I think we recommend that uh, a fourth dose uh, may be given converting the uh, post-exposure prophylaxis into a pre-exposure. Uh, vaccination. So this is one of the recommendations, but uh, to make it little more complicated and kind of a new recommended new situation where uh, one week regimen has come, uh, ID has come, only 037 has come and they are considered three doses of vaccine is considered adequate uh, and uh, they are uh, sufficient to produce uh, immunological memory. And uh, any subsequent doses of vaccine will elicit a, a, an amnestic response. If somebody uh, wants to stop at three doses, 0, 3, 7, and a uh, patient cannot afford the fourth dose, uh, he can still leave a message with the patient that uh, he has taken three doses of uh, vaccine. And uh, this should be considered uh, adequate to be considered as a priming uh, uh, immunizing dose uh, for an amnestic response 
for a future rabies exposure and a two dose uh, booster i think uh, though it is little tricky i have tried to make it uh, simple but uh, uh, i think if uh, ashwath narayan wants to say anything or even dr ravish you can also make it uh, more uh, simplified or uh, uh, explain it in a in your own way it is welcome over yes sir the, the similar related question is also there sir the vast whether you can uh, avoid all these confusions and take that uh, following up of animals recommendation and straight forwardly recommend only one dose which will not be confusing uh, one you may to say one regimen yes sir uh, i no i think you see uh, rabies biologicals are also expensive and not uh, uh, affordable and sometimes not available in interior remote areas and all so uh, risk that's why we say that uh, a risk assessment should be done and accordingly the rabies prophylaxis has to be tailored so we cannot uh, make a, a blanket uh, a recommendation and uh, waste rabies biologicals over thank you sir the next question to ashwath narayan sir it is simple i think you have already told once again Uh, does rodent bite and uh, others require ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ತಾಳಿ ರವೀಶ್ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಅದೇನೋ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಟೀಮ್ ಏನೋ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅದು ಆರೂವರೆಗೆ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಯ್ತಾ ನೋಡಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗಿದೆ ದೇ ಮೈಟ್ ಹವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕೇಳಿ ನಾನು ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ the moderator is disconnected okay. you both can okay. continue discussing if there is okay okay we will continue but uh, we, uh, how to see the questions let me see okay 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 uh i think uh, dr ashwath narayan are you able to see the questions no sir i am not able to see so even i am not able to see so I'm what we will do is uh, and uh, uh, the audience is in another so, room Dr. Ashwath, yeah. we can share the questions with you on chat. Yeah, yeah, please. Please yeah. share it with, with Ashwath Narayan. Yeah. It is there, sir, in the chat. Yeah, I will pick up randomly. Can we give Rabi Shield to five days old baby? Yes. Answer is yes. As rabies is 100% fatal, there is no contraindication. Age is not a contraindication. Six is not a contraindication. It can be given. It can be uh, given safely to even to a uh, newborn baby. the next thing is next question is uh things that has to be done when we get a case of serum sickness first line medication so this serum sickness like reactions usually do occur uh when we provide uh, heterologous uh, medicine especially the erig erig the usually it occurs uh, around 7 uh, seven, seven days uh, first week after uh, 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 providing the erig so we need to provide uh, analgesics anti histamines uh, to these subjects yeah i think dr ravish is back yes sir can i continue is it audible yes 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 ravish yes yes very clear yes sir thank you sir why next question is to dr ashwath narayan sir yeah why is apcri not recommending the use of 
our map straight away and stop the use of rings uh we have not come out with the any guidelines we uh, definitely promote as in my presentation i said apcr is there is there aggressively promoting passive immunization not only rigs even the monoclonal antibodies we are supporting both the products both all the rigs and also monoclonal antibodies but uh, we have to go by uh, national guidelines but it is left to the individual practitioners to use it because they because they they have they have that uh, medical degree and yeah apcri uh, fully uh, recommend all the products which have been approved and recommended by drug controller of india once again the related question sir for you oh, dr ravish one minute yes, i think you see uh, i am these days getting outspoken yes, consortium sir. against rabies have come out with a guidelines yes sir am i clear so i yes, recommend sir. uh apcri also to come out with a guideline that incorporates yes, best uh, parts of uh, who and uh, government of india to repeat the best parts of who and government of india or any other thing which uh, the executive committee considers good for india should be incorporated and incorporated and shall be brought out as a APCR, you see, Indian Academy of Pediatrics, they are coming out with a guideline. If you yes, remember, in two thousand seven or eight or nine, we had come out with a guidelines for uh, uh, rabies use of uh, rabies. Children, yeah, children. Yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, RAG, uh, passive rabies uh, RAG guideline booklet. I think it is there even today. So yes, my right. request and my uh, submission is, please come out with a guideline. Uh, for uh, uh, rabies prophylaxis, uh, in the context of some confusions like this, that is there, and also more so in the context of uh, already CAR has brought out one guideline. Over. Yes, Thank you. Sir. Thank and uh, the question, of course, uh, uh, Prasad Kulkarni sir is not there. If Manish Wadwa sir can answer, there is an important question for him. Uh, can Manish Wadwa sir uh, can answer there? Now, what is the question? Okay. I'll, I'll read the question. Yeah. Can you make uh, R maps available even at the rural areas or at the primary health center level? It's a marketing question. It's yes, a marketing sir. question. If yes, there is a need, I think they will do it. Uh, accessibility, and our, they will make available. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next question, please. Yeah. Next. What is the half life of RMAB? If I remember, I think it's two years. See, two years, sir. Asking, no, no, no. He's asking half life, half life. Yes. Oh, half life. Sorry, sir. Not, not expiry. Oh, okay. Shelf life. Not the shelf life. Shelf life. life. Okay, yeah, half yeah. life. Half life. Um, okay, okay. Wait hey, no, one minute. See, I think uh, Prasad Kulkarni would have been uh, the best person. If I remember, it, it is around four weeks. But anyway, uh, let us go to the website of Serum Institute of India, refer to the uh, Rebbe Shield and also the Twin Lab Over. Pardon? Yamanish is on phone. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, sir, Yamanish is on phone. Yes, sir. Yamanish is on phone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, we, you, Dr. Ravish, you can always get back to this question. This is an important question. Yeah, over. You can go to the next question. Yeah, please. Uh, yes, see, as far as supply is concerned, there is no problem at all. We can definitely make it available. We are already working uh, with many state governments in their tenders and all that. And uh, we have got success also. So... Uh, the ep government and the telangana government all have already included rabies shield and we have started supplies also yes we can definitely make it available across the country there is no doubt about that yes sir the next question
హలో డాక్టర్ రవీష్ యాజ్ ఐ టోల్డ్ యూ ఐ థింక్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అరౌండ్ త్రీ టు ఫోర్ వీక్స్ బట్ ఎనీవే విల్ గెట్ ఇట్ కన్ఫర్మ్డ్ ఆఫ్ లైక్ యా ఓకే థాంక్ యూ ఐ విల్ రీడ్ ద లాస్ట్ क्वेश्चन సర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ 185th क्वेश्चन వాట్ ఈస్ టు బి డన్ ఇఫ్ డాగ్ బై టకర్ సెగైన్ ఆఫ్టర్ సమ్ ఇంటర్వల్ ఆఫ్ ఫుల్ ఇమ్యునైజేషన్ సుదర్శన్ సర్ ప్లీజ్ time interval for booster vaccination say after uh, exposure the yeah, yeah that uh, the world health organization at government of india recommendation is in a, a person who has received four post exposure prophylaxis or a full post pre exposure or pre bite prophylaxis previous day and if the person is re exposed that is bitten once again or exposed to rabies in a different way within 20 days only that is 3 months only good wound management is adequate and no immunization no vaccine or no immunoglobulin is indicated this is the recommendation if it is beyond three months that is 90 days then such individuals require two doses of vaccine either by intramuscular route or by intradermal route first dose on day zero second dose on day three and in these re-exposed individuals no immunoglobulin is required so this is the recommendation however the treating physician shall do a proper risk assessment in terms of severity of exposure the nature of the biting animal its availability and uh, any delay in uh, uh, visiting the clinic and any mal practices or bad practices like uh, application of the uh any applicant to the wound or uh, uh, suturing of the wound in such situations i think one need to uh, very carefully and critically evaluate the risk of rabies uh, vis-a-vis these guidelines and take a independent professional decision in the best interest of his or her patient over sir thank you very much uh, with this we, we can uh, come to an end of this session uh, thanks all the speakers once again for uh, giving a detailed information and answering most of the questions thank you very much sir sudarshan sir ashwath narayan sir and prasad kulkarni sir yeah, now it you. is thank you the, thank you sir now it is over to the organizers yes uh, i take this opportunity to thank dr sudarshan dr ashwath and dr ravish for and for the wonderful uh, talk and excellent moderation sir and uh, let us all work together to make rabies really history so that we really achieve help in achieving that goal of uh, zero by 30 thank you so much uh, one last question from my side how many persons attended this webinar total there were about 580 odd okay thank you thank you manish ji have a nice yes. evening you have done a yeah. wonderful job by organizing this webinar at a very short notice thank you very much over bye okay thank you thank you dr manish thank the audience